All right, what's up you guys? So this is me talking to you guys from the present day because the video that you guys are about to see was actually done like a week ago. So throughout the video, I'm gonna be chiming in to you know talk about little things that I missed or you know little stuff like that so I could make things a little bit clear. Before the video starts, I wanna say one thing. Um, I know that we're gonna have our you know master technicians, master automotive technicians, especially our you know Lexus and Toyota enthusiasts watching. I want you guys to know that this is my first time doing this, so there are gonna be little mistakes in there. And then the other guy that's helping me, he's not even a you know Lexus Toyota guy, he's a Honda guy. So this is his first time tackling something like this too. And I would say at least give us credit for you know tackling this on our own, rather than me just going to a freaking shop and handing him the keys and saying, all right, swap my car to manual. There are some mistakes in there that I could have left out, but I figured I would just leave them in there so you guys could, you know, see the mistakes that I make. But I doubt that you guys will make those two mistakes that I made. And I thought they were a little bit funny. So, you know, you guys just take it easy. But without further ado, this is the IS300 manual swap video. All right, I'd like to introduce you guys to my new Lexus IS300. You guys probably caught this in the previous clip, but yes, it is automatic. Yep. Surprisingly, I'm actually kind of okay with it. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna, you know, convert it or not. I might. I'm still thinking about what I want to do with this car. What is up, you guys? Thank you for tuning in to today's video. Today is finally the day we've all been waiting for. Today is the day that the manual swap goes down, but uh, things are not looking up right now. First of all, I wanted to start by 9.30 or like nine. Right now it's 11 something. So I'm sort of behind schedule. And the main reason why that I'm behind schedule is that I found out that the throwout bearing and the clip that I have for the throwout bearing, it's not gonna work. Well, it wasn't gonna work. So I panicked and of course I hit up Tony at IBT and uh, eventually we found a fork and the clip from an IS300. So that's what I'm gonna be using. And then, so right now I'm headed to Zane's house so we can head over to the shop. But the main issue is no one else is showing up. <laughs> so it's only gonna be me and Zane doing the swap and then the person that I'm borrowing the shop from, uh, he's gonna be there too. He's actually one of my good friends. He says that he's not gonna help, but I know he's gonna end up helping. But yeah, um, I'm sort of bummed because it was you know, supposed to be like three of us, three, four of us, but it looks like it's only gonna be me and Zane. So hopefully we can knock this out and hopefully this works out. I don't wanna fill this like video with like unnecessary footage. So I'm just gonna head over to Zane, pick him up. And then the next time you guys see me, we should be at the shop. This is my first time here, so I thought that this place was gonna be like a small little one garage shop, but this is actually like a, you know, it's actually like an open area. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy that we're gonna have, you know, space to work. And you know, it's not, it's not gonna be all cramped. All right, so we got the car inside the garage. So let's get this thing started. Where's my main man, Fritz? Hey, Fritz, man, you on camera? Hey. All right, man, I wanna thank my, Main man over here, Fritz, for letting me use the shop. But I also want to say, Fritz, you a bitch for not answering your phone. <laughs> supposed to be here since nine. Yeah, I was supposed to be here since nine, but I ran into some technical difficulties. But technical, sure. Yeah. So let's get into it, Fritz. Come on. Oh, you're getting into it with Zane. Zane. <laughs> Fritz. <laughs> Come on, Fritz. Come on. Man. All right, Zane, man. Let's knock this shit out. Yeah. All right, you guys. So we got the car in the air. First step is to drain the transmission fluid, right, Fritz? We're gonna, we're gonna drain the transmission fluid, right? Yeah. All right, so is this one bolt right here. I'm gonna drain that and all the transmission fluid should come out. All right, so that's a 14 millimeter. There you go, transmission fluid comes up. All right, so now there's two 17 millimeter bolts up here for the engine mounts. There's two on this side and two on Zane's side right here, and you gotta break those loose. Yo, you got a breaker bar, right? Huh? You got a bigger one there? Yeah, so just break the two 17s that, that are on each side, Yo, and then that'll make the engine mounts loose. so these are all four of the nuts all right looking back at the video um i think that we shouldn't have taken the nuts all the way out i would say you guys just you know unscrew the nuts until they get towards the end of the stud so that way when you undo the cross member it can lean back safely and you know still have the nuts in there to sort of secure it i guess you would say now after you get these four nuts out you also need to remove your exhaust so it's going to be 
these it's gonna be these three bolts one up here one up there the another one on the other side right there all right so for the exhaust bolts I'm using this long ass extension only because I need to use the swivel socket for the top two bolts they're both both they're both 14s one up here that you got to take out and then the last one is up here and the ones that are at the top they're harder to take out that's why I got the swivel all right so we have the whole exhaust out so like I was saying for the Y pipe it's these two bolts right up here and then that one bolt down in the middle and then we just took the whole muffler out so the whole cap well from the Y pipe down we took everything out remember to remove the O2 sensor first before you try to take out any bolts because it makes it way easier ain't that right Zane? Yep. <laughs> so right now this one about to get strip. Hold on, nah, don't do that I'm first. Gonna take it all the way yeah, out. we gotta take off the drive shaft first. Yeah. So we're gonna start taking off the drive shaft. So basically these two bolts here, I think they're 14s. Let me see a 14. Yep, and these are 14s. So you're gonna take these two bolts out. And then after that, we're gonna unhook st mad stupid M96. So we're gonna unhook the drive shaft. I mean, we're gonna unhook the drive shaft from the diff. And these, I think they're 12s. The Loosen these four bolts first because you don't want the drive shaft hanging from the middle. So save these two for last and then unbolt these four. Yeah. And then after you take these bolts out, the whole drive shaft is gonna drop down and then we'll just pull it right out of the transmission. All right, so we got these two out. Now the thing is we have to put the car in neutral so we could turn the drive shaft so we could get the other two. So yeah, we're gonna rotate the drive shaft and get the other two. My main man Fritz over here is getting uh what are these called for it to those out okay. so this is a 12 millimeter on that side and is there another side no it's only one side. nope only one okay oh, man, i mean this this is my first time doing this i guess you just pry it out ain't that right fritz you the man fritz you the man all right and that's out you said this is the shifter, the shift linkage? Yeah. Okay. So how are you going to put it in neutral? Huh? Right here. That's what you shift inside. That turn this. Yeah. Yeah, what? but how how do we put it in neutral though? If you just took it off. That gets enough. I mean, yeah. I mean, Fritz knows what he's doing, so. Okay. All right, Fritzius. That's in that's in neutral? Yeah. If, if you're right, this should be able to spin. <laughs> Fritz the goat. <laughs> you the goat, Fritz. All right, now we have access to the other two bolts, so let's just pop those out. All right, so we got all four bolts out. Now it's time to go for these two 14 millimeters. All right, so now that we have these two bolts off, the way you get this off is that you gotta hit the U-joints with hammers. So rotate it all around and just hit every, I guess, edge with a hammer. Hey, Fritz, you got a hammer? All right, so Zane just pried it out with a flathead, and now it's time to pull the drive shaft out. And boom, there it is, automatic drive shaft. I'll mix you up now, which one? And then compare that. What is the same exact? It's not. Yeah, I wanna I wanna point this out to you guys. The automatic drive shaft is shorter than the manual drive shaft, and the yoke is different too. So if you have an automatic it will not fit in the manual transmission all right so the manual is longer than the automatic transmission all right you guys so we're inside the car because i did forget that we have to take out the center console to remove this automatic shifting stuff so let's start pulling this apart all right then you gonna hop in is there two people do this i don't know maybe uh guys when it comes to taking out the interior i'm sorry but my car is missing a whole bunch of screws and bolts, so I can't take you. So I can't tell you exactly how to take it out, cause half of my sh like this right here, it, it just pops out. <laughs> but there are screws that hold it. So sometimes I can't really help you guys when it comes to taking out the interior, but I'll try to do my best. So pull this piece out. I don't know how everybody else's comes out, but mine comes out just like this. Get this extra stuff out. All right, now I'm just gonna take out this piece right here. See, look at that, my whole shit just moved. Hmm. Look at this. <laughs> so that's look at this. That's why I said when it comes to interior pieces, I can't really help you guys because my stuff just comes out. 
All right, so so I'm gonna take this out, then I'll get back to you guys. All right, so there's a sensor on the end of here, and then there's this sensor right here, but mine was never hooked up, so I don't know what it's used for. I'm sorry, but I don't know. And there's this sensor right here that is not plugged in either. Okay, all right, so we're not gonna worry about that. So to take this off, I'm assuming is these four 10 millimeter bolts right here. One, two, and then three, and then a fourth one right where? Oh yeah, fourth one right here, the silver one right there. So undo those 10, I mean those four 10 millimeter bolts, then we should be Gucci. All right, so we undid all four bolts. Now we're gonna take this plate off to see how we're gonna remove this whole assembly. But first you gotta take off the shift knob. Uh, goodbye, IS-300 shift knob. Gone. Hey, all right, now we gotta figure out how we're gonna get this piece out. Hmm. Oh, okay. So basically, these plastic clips were holding you down, so you gotta pull these up and back out, and then, and then that's how they pop out. Hold on, you got one more. One more right here. Yeah. Pop that clip out. Nah. Boom. All right. Now this is able to lift up. And that's the oh, okay. See the shift linkage that we undid down there. That's what allows you to take this whole assembly out. That's a long ass. Yeah, yeah this is long as That shit didn't even see so long for the bottom. And just like that, you got your automatic shifter out. Now, we're also going to have to cut this right here because that's where my transmission is going to sit. So it's going to sit a little bit closer here, but it's fine. That's why we have that type of shifter. But yeah, so we're going to have to cut that. But since we have this loose, let's go back to the bottom and then let's get the thing. Uh, let's get this transmission out. All right, you guys. So we got Matt over here, right? How's it going? Matt. What's your name? Kevin, aka Kid Lavish, local lavish. Oh. Right. What's your name? <laughs> Alan. All right, so we have them here. They're gonna actually be helping us film, uh, cause it like gets tough when you're trying to do stuff and you know try to film at the same time. Yeah, so he asked to help, and I was like, sure, because we need as much help as we can get. So we're gonna knock this thing out. Uh, like you guys seen, we got the center console out, and then we're gonna be just tilt. Um, we got to get the cross member out, and then we're gonna tilt the transmission back, and then that'll allow us to get all the bolts around the transmission. So this should be pretty straightforward. It shouldn't be too bad, but we're gonna knock this thing up. Right, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You guys ready? All right. All right. So we're gonna be taking the cross member out. Um, what's these? Fourteens? Yeah, fourteen. All right. So these are fourteens. At the insides, those are twelves, right? Or tens? I didn't even see those. Yeah, I think these four they look like tens. It is indeed a twelve. So there's four 12 millimeter nuts right here, and then there's four 14 millimeter bolts. So after you drop these, the transmission should come out. And then after that, I guess we're gonna get started on, actually, I think we should break these first. I think so, yeah. So we're gonna try to get these out. And then after we get the ones that we can see out, then we take these off. So these, I know these are 14s for sure. So. We're gonna need a longer extension with a swivel socket. This is a 17. I got these from Harbor Freight. So you're gonna need these to get the two. Um, this is a 17, right? No, 14. Not this. It's a 17. So you're gonna need these to get the, the the two 17 bolts that are on the sides of the transmission. This is 17 on there. Over here. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So right up there, swivel socket comes in handy. Boom. Hold this. Let's see if I can muscle this thing out of here. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fail. All right. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's on there, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're getting this out. Hell no. Mm. I don't want to break it. Hey, you got a half inch extension? You don't have a breaker bar? I mean, uh, um. Okay. All right. So we're going to try What's this gonna one. Snap? What's going to snap? Yeah, right, That's what I was thinking. Think so? Who we know from the bottom? All right. Oh, we, we can do that too. All right, same bar reinforcements. Let's 
scared. Okay. All right, we got it. Is this still on? I don't have bolt for nothing. All right, first 17 is out. All right, now let's get the other side. Hey, bro. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> All right, this is the second seventeen. What's up there? And guys, you want to make sure that you put your bolts somewhere you could, you know, distinguish all of them. I mean, mine is pretty sloppy, but I, I got the 17 like the for the transmission. These right here are for the drive shaft. These right here are the nuts for the engine mounts. All right, so make sure you have some kind of system going on so you don't get bolts mixed up. My Fritz acting like he don't want to help me. My Fritz always, always playing hard, hard to get. I'm a hug. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, give me that 14. So, how you, how you gonna drop it down? I guess somebody's gonna be pulling this down. You don't have that stand for it? Uh, yeah, I was gonna see if Fritz had one of those things. You know, those things no, that spin up. I don't up. have that, bro. I don't hold that engine, that transmission up. So you want to tell me all you good for is a lift? Yeah. He's a bitch. <laughs> always ungrateful. No matter how hard you help him. All right, so we got the bottom two 14s and the two side 17s. Right now, we got to get the starter up. See if you can bring the light up here. All right, so to get those out, it's this bolt right there. Hold on. Yeah. Is this bolt right here and there's another bolt at the top uh, I'm not gonna be able to really show you guys exactly what it looks like but I guess when everything comes down I could point everything out to you guys but yeah there's two bolts that's holding the starter and you got to get those and those are way up there so I think that we're gonna need to get the transmission and lean down all right so let's get these loose so like I said these are four twelves that are up here and then the four that are on the side, they're both 14s. I mean, all four of them are 14. That shit gonna hurt. That's what you need. Hey man, pass me that pole. So we decided to take the bottom bolt of the starter out first. Uh, I'm telling you guys, if you guys don't have swivel sockets, you gotta get them now, cause I don't think it's gonna work out without them. Cause look at this angle that I got right here. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> so right now, uh, what size is that? A 17. We're getting another 17 bolt that's up towards the top in here. I don't know if you could get an angle on that side. If you can see it, move your hand. Part of where you see it. Yeah, right. If you see where the extension leads, that's where the 17 is. And we're gonna pop that out. You gonna hold this in? You got that? Nah, just hold. All right. I could, swear, I could swear we just breaking sockets out here. <laughs> Tell me, when it comes to the swap, swivel sockets is key. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> yep. Alright, so you guys, don't forget to take off this ground wire. I almost did, but Fritz just reminded us. And looks like there's... Oh, there's bolts on this side too. Okay. I did not know that. Okay. So there's two bolts over here. And you have to break those and uh, for the automatic transmission there's a torque converter so we have to get these out right here I don't know how did they turn it again oh yeah you got to use the crank from the front so yeah we have there's six bolts and each of them are 12 millimeters I believe and you have to spin the engine from the front so you can get all six bolts out all right so we're just gonna remove these two which is one of one of them is the negative and then we're gonna get to the torque converter bolts. Blue. Okay. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Yeah, cause the one I tried, like I wasn't trying to do a new one, I was just fixing the one of the mohats and hers. Well, Zane's famous. <laughs>
You gotta come take the spotlight, bro. Engine. I only use a freaking impact. Yeah. I think this just rounded up. Is this mine or Fritz? It's fine. Okay. What the? F what? Why are we here, bro? Filling that bolt, huh? Yeah, Zane loose and more. No, I use. That one, that one is not a 14, is it? No, it is, but it's just kind of rounded. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, Zane, man, we need your muscle. Someone gonna die, right? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't spending none of this shit. Oh, Zane, bro. Zane, what? Hurry <laughs> up. Jesus Christ. So, hold on. I'm supposed to stand here and hold this. Y'all <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> niggas is tripping. <laughs> All right, so where's the stand at? Hey. Give me the jacks. Yeah, tripping. Yeah, you can't do some shit. Yeah, and unplug no harness on the gym. Oh, yeah, we didn't. Jeez. <laughs> we forgot I unplugged this one. Though. We forgot to unplug the harness. <laughs> oh, man, rookie mistake, you guys. Rookie mistake. There's two plugs on this side. Right oh, here. He came back again with that same shit. <laughs> and there's another it's plug up, right? up here. You can see that? Right. What is it, 17? Yeah. I don't know yeah. what it is. There's this plug right here. And then there's this one nut on this side. Did you catch that? There's a nut right here that you have to remove also. Oh, there's two of them actually that you got to remove. There's one nut right here. And then the second nut is on this side. Nah. That's a 17. Where's the 17? That's what she said. 120? Waiting at the field? Always talking shit. <laughs> Pretty sure you're tightening it. I'm fine. <laughs> that boy's about to let me have it. <laughs> He's about to let me have it. <laughs> yeah, because if we didn't undo the top bolts right there, I don't think the transmission would have leaned back this far. So, that you guys... Nothing to do with the top bolts. Hey, man, I know what I'm talking about. You're fucking are you the first person on my videos that ever bully me? First, usually I make fun of other people. So I get when you came and you don't know shit. Yeah, nah, I know shit, but you think you know better. <laughs> don't I know better? Nope. Yes, I left you struggle with your piece of shit right now. <laughs> Big ass mother. <laughs> Isn't that curse so much? You gotta cut all that out. <laughs> Alright, so I don't know where the footage went for when I was talking about the extension that you need for the top two bolts after you get the transmission to lean back a little bit. And I don't know where it went. It got lost somewhere. So I apologize for that. But let me show you guys what size, like around the size uh, extension that you need to get those bolts out. First is just right here. Now, this is a extra, this is a super long socket that I actually bought from Harbor Freight. Um, it came in a pack of three but this is the only one out of the three that was a three eighths. So this extra super long socket, then you might want to grab another one of these sockets right here. And this might've been enough, but to be extra sure, we got another socket from my pack of tools. And then there you go, extra long socket. All right, so I just measured it and this came out to be about three feet, three inches. Alright you guys, so I'm on my phone now. So right now, we got the transmission out. We made a huge mess. I gotta get all this. <laughs> Here's the automatic transmission. Uh, yeah, basically we had to cut the automatic transmission uh, fluid line because it was caught. I guess it just wouldn't come out, so we had to cut it. And that's how we managed to get this out. Now. The automatic transmission is like 10 times heavier than the manual transmission, all right? So it took four, I mean, three of us to, to get it out and we barely got it. So you guys need some help taking this thing out because that shit was dangerous, like super dangerous. I feared for Zane's life. <laughs> you almost killed me, bro. <laughs> all right, so now that we got those out, all that's left is to remove the torque converter and then we could take out the automatic flywheel and all that stuff. And then we get to putting everything together. So to remove the torque converter, it's six 14 millimeter bolts. The thing is, you're gonna have to turn the engine to get to each bolt. So 
As you turn the engine, it's gonna show another bolt so you could take off. Okay, strong man. Strong man Zane over here. All right, so this is the second oh, bolt. Got it? Yeah. All right, Zane. We yeah. ain't reached yet. This is hard. You're passing the compression stage. Yeah. This is hard. <laughs> you got it? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the third. Continue turning it the way you were turning it. So just keep turning it until you get all six bolts up. And you're gonna have to have somebody hold that when you get the last bolt out, cause it is gonna uh, fall off. Huh? We force it. We do it all way. <laughs> so what Fritz is saying here is a lot of people they undo the six bolts for the torque converter first So they could just have the transmission come out with the torque converter I guess and then but the way that we did it is just we took the transmission out first and then we took the torque converter last But it still worked out perfectly fine. We didn't have any kind of issues So we're doing everything the way that we found it easy and it seemed to work out fine So I don't think it really matters which one goes out first, but I could be wrong But all I'm saying is that it was easy for us. So you guys don't have to follow it exactly Exactly the way we did it but it worked <laughs> I mean I'm doing it the easy way though basically the way that I do it that's how I'm telling them to do it yeah so you got to have somebody to hold this so now we have access to the flywheel so we got to get that out and then that's when we could change out the rear main seal so just remove those eight bolts to remove the automatic flywheel it's a tool, right? all right after you take the four bolts out then you can remove the automatic fly, I mean not four bolts, it's eight bolts. The automatic flywheel. Where did this come from? This is still part of the flywheel. Okay. Pull all those parts out. Then you have access to the rear main seal, which is this right here. You think it's leaking, Fritz? No? You have it changing. All right. So, I'm trying to take my sweet steps because I feel like I'm gonna slip. There's the rear main seal. All right, so Fritz just scooped out the rear main seal with a flathead, and here it is. He did a little bit of damage to it, but it's okay. Clean it off with some brake cleaner before you put it on there. <laughs> That's the new seal. I thought it was harder than that. I know I didn't show you guys exactly how to install the rear main seal, but um, it's not something that you have to do with the manual swap, but it's just one of those things that it's nice to do while you have the transmission out. If you guys want to see how to take it out and then put a new one in, just search up 2JZ rear main seal on YouTube and you'll find a few videos on how to do it. All right, so there's the flywheel. Flywheel bolts, the tool. <laughs> Yo, they don't have a diagram? I'm a diagram questioning. What? All right, so right now, he's hammering in the pilot bearing. So you wanna make sure that you use a socket that fits the outside diameter of the pilot bearing. You don't wanna hit the inside. That's how you get your pilot bearing in. All right, so now we got the flywheel in. We're gonna be putting the flywheel bolts in. Now I do have some Loctite. Gonna be using the red Loctite. I know some people are panicking because they see me using red Loctite, but trust me, it's fine. All you gotta do is just use an impact gun when you're trying to remove the bolts whenever you want to, and that's it. Right, now just get all eight bolts in there. And then for the bolts, you're going to be needing a 13 millimeter 12 point socket. All right, so we're just going to use this 14, I mean 13 millimeter 12 point socket to bolt them in. And then um, you want to torque them to around 75 or 80. That's what uh, 
that's what drift motion said that they recommend so that's exactly what we're gonna do and i'm trying to get out of here all right so now we got the eight bolts for the flywheel in here yeah. and now just to torque them down all right so this is the pressure plate and the clutch you want to make sure that you take the side that sticks out, this side right here, and put that in the pressure plate. And then you're gonna need the clutch alignment tool so you can line it up perfectly. Here it is right here. Clutch alignment tool. Stick that through there. tip of the clutch alignment tool goes through the pilot bearing and then that's how you line everything up Doing this. what no what no i need those bolts, bolts. do i have them <laughs> I don't know what happened to the bolts I had for the pressure plate and it looks like mine my kit didn't come with any where I lost them I don't, I don't know and so he's pulling this one off to see if I can use them hopefully, hopefully I can hopefully it's the same thread pitch yeah. this one came off with Scion right yeah. Scion Toyota let us yeah. pray it's the same? Out of luck, my really? Hey, stop playing, bro. <laughs> bro, this is about to make me cry, like, really. It's the same, right? <laughs> all right, so we got the pressure plate on and it's all tight and secure. So oh, now, so now it's time to cut the tunnel so we could get this transmission over there to fit. Because with the W58, it's not gonna fit. It's gonna sit around here. So we're gonna have to cut it. So go ahead, Zan. So here, 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 right? Yeah. All right. Gonna have to paint that. You're gonna have to what? Paint it so it doesn't rust. So now we have that cut. So now it's time to just pick this up and then we're gonna fit it in there, get the bolts in, and yeah, boom. Mean you this up. We're like engine lift right now, like transmission lift. Engine. All right, Bobby, for that side. Zane is like a barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sport. He's throwing that shit. He have to be straight. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. There's no fork or throttle bearing in there. What the f? Why, why the hell you didn't put your in this? Sh <laughs> There's no fork or. Damn. I understand, I understand. Yeah, I, I f you up. <laughs> but Zane, I, I gotta ride it out. And I even told him if you know you're not gonna be there before the time, you fight. You don't need to come no more. Hey, still sure it's big. Yeah, so <laughs> All right, so right now, guys, we got the transmission in. We're just bolting it up. Those are those are fourteens. About you shut the f up before you start talking. This thing always <laughs> bullying in it, bro. All right, one day I'm gonna f you up for it to watch. You've been trying to f me up for years, and it still haven't had. Watch, so you guys know. I'm doing that. <laughs> it's only this guy and freaking Jason. Them two are the only two that ever treat me like this. <laughs> Jason, Jason is part of this blog too. Is there a problem? We're, we're like our, your employee right now. Yeah. You need to treat your employee right so you can get a good job. Yeah. Next thing you know. 
Next thing you know, you're trying to hit the street, you put it in gear, and nothing happened. Nothing. After you get everything bolted up, it's basically just putting everything. It's basically doing everything in reverse, just putting everything back together. We got the cross member on, and now we got the manual drive cast in. Of course, we're doing the middle two bolts first. Then we're gonna do the back. You got the bolts. Yeah. Hey, I'm sort of bummed because it sort of got sketchy towards the end because my card got full of memory. Uh, that really pissed me off. Like, yeah, but yeah, I'm basically manual, you guys. Ain't that right, Fritz? Yeah. If it's gonna shift, that's the problem. If it's gonna shift, it's gonna shift. <laughs> if it's not gonna, woohoo, boy! He's talking about who, who, boy, like he's about to do something. Hell yeah, I'll, I'll punch his name right in his face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if this, if Chris, this, you know how I make coffins? <laughs> I'm going to twist backward, bro. I don't get this guy. <laughs> That's where my hand Yeah, so we're just putting everything back together, man. But job well done. All right, so now we're installing the clutch line. Got this from IBT. What's IBT? I'm a boy All right, you guys. So everything is bolting up for the exhaust. Zane, man, you was a big help. Yeah. Thanks for coming out, even though you was taking sides with Fritz. <laughs> and y'all, uh, I know a lot of people might think Fritz is an asshole. Fritz is an asshole. But <laughs> the thing is, um, he's my asshole. Right? <laughs> nah, that's kind of gay. I'm <laughs> that boy said he's my <laughs> asshole. Ha! <laughs> But yeah, basically me and Fritz worked at the, Fritz used to work where I work. And Fritz is basically one of the main people that, you know, trained me, right? And you know, I'm Haitian, Fritz is Haitian. So, you know, we're always, you know, messing around with each other. So anything Fritz says, he's joking around. Even though I might get mad sometimes when he, when he overdoes it. But you know, me and Fritz were, you know, straight up friends. So yes, he's an asshole, but we're all just, you know, playing around. He's just more of an asshole than all of my other friends. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, man, Fritz is cool. Like, I'm so happy that he let me use his shop to get this thing done. Like, he came in clutch. Uh, imagine if we were doing this without a lift. Yeah. We would have. Bro! Oh, man. Huge shout out to Fritz, man. You came in clutch. All right, you guys. So, we have the clutch line wired up. And then we have. Yeah. We have the clutch line wired yeah. up. We have the clutch line wired up. Now, let's go to the inside. I'm going to go here to the inside of the car. Here it is. So this is how it's gonna be sitting. I know it looks sort of weird. All right, Zane, uh, grab me the two bottles of gear oil. I'm gonna be using gear oil. And you wanna use 75W90. And yeah, so let's just... <laughs> I'm over here spinning. <laughs> you wanna use around two and a half pints. Yeah, so you want to use like two and a half bottles of those. That depending on if your transmission has some in there or not already. Now it's time to install the Cube Speed short shifter. Huge thanks to Cube Speed for sending it out once again. And you guys seen this already, so I don't got to really show you guys how to install this because not everybody has a Cube Speed short shifter. So I'll throw this in and then I'll get back to you guys. Another part of the video that got lost somewhere in the footage um, is how we actually got the car to start up. So of course, uh, when you swap it to manual, the car is not gonna start up unless it's in park or in neutral. So basically what the plan was is that we were going to tap the two wires on the harness that's on the transmission so we could get the car to start. But when we tried to tap it, when we tried to use that little, let me show you what we were gonna do. We we're gonna use this right here to bridge the two wires, but that ended up not working. What Fritz's cousin Chandler told me to do is to grab the safety switch off of the automatic transmission. This is basically what the shift linkage was connected to on the automatic shifter. So basically we took this out. Uh, I think it's a 12 millimeter bolt. I could be wrong, but it's on the right side of the transmission. So we took this out and then we plugged it back into here. And then what you got to do is you got to put a flathead screwdriver in this and then turn it. This is what chooses what gear you're in. Well, if you're in park, reverse, neutral, 
L, whatever. So basically you're gonna turn it and then once it hits park or neutral, the car is gonna start up. So while you're turning it, you're gonna have somebody inside the car uh, cranking the engine. So then once it gets into neutral or park, it's gonna start right up. But if you wanna try it the bridging way, what you gotta do is these two wires right here, this and that, you gotta bridge these two wires. But the thing is, it didn't work for me. So this was an easier fix. I need to find somewhere to have this sit so it's not dangling, but it's not really dangling at all. It's just sitting right in between here, but it's sort of ugly, but I'll fix all that when I swap in the one J. But um, yeah, so that's all we did. Just take this off of the transmission. It's on the right side and then plug it back into this plug right here and then just turn this dial until but then again if you have the car in neutral when you're taking the automatic transmission off i guess you don't have to worry about turning this dial just make sure the car is in neutral when you take the automatic transmission off and this will be automatically in neutral so then once it's at the right spot it's going to crank the car right up and the car should start All right, you guys, so today is the next day of this manual swap. All right, so basically yesterday ended a little shaky because we ran into an issue. So basically the issue was the rod inside of the slave cylinder kept on getting stuck. And let me show you guys. So right now it's actually in the stuck position right now. And um, yeah, so we couldn't figure out why it kept on getting stuck. So I went to Facebook and I asked people, you know, questions on what it could be and stuff like that. And then uh, three people, I think, actually reach out. Shut the f Are you gonna tell me how to run my vlog? That yes, you can tell them you went on Facebook. Other than that, everybody will be running to Facebook. Okay, so? Facebook doesn't fix cars. All right, man, do not mind Fritz. This man just freaking grumpy. All right, so yeah, so I spoke to a few people and then they said that when it comes to swapping a W58 out of a Mark III Supra, you have to get the rod from a Mark IV Supra. So yeah, I got the longer rod at AutoZone actually, like that's a freaking miracle because AutoZone is not supposed to have these parts. So here's the, this is the slave from a Mark IV Supra. I took the rod out already, it would suck if I lost it. So here's the rod, this is definitely longer than the one that's in there right now. All right, first, so you wanna take this off right, man? No, man, that's <laughs> your job, not mine. All right, so right now I'm just gonna take these two bolts out because this is not gonna come out because it's stuck open. So I'm gonna take, all right, all right, watch Fritz try to show me up. I'm not trying to show up, I'm trying to see if we can press it. Yeah, so this is stuck like that, so I have to unbolt it to get it out. And then I'll be swapping out the rod that's in there right now with the Mark IV Super Rod. And we'll see if that works. All right, so we got the piston pushed back in. Now we're putting that through. It didn't stick that far out. It was at it was at the tip. So, like I said before, that is a rod out of a Mark IV Supra. Right, add some more fluid. Now I'm gonna be waiting for Fritz to come and sit inside the car so I could bleed it. You gonna help me do it. All right, you guys, so we just got done bleeding the slave. No, it doesn't kick out. We got Chandler inside the car right here. God damn. He says that the clutch has real good pressure. So you're gonna back it up? Yeah, I'm gonna back it up. All right. So, we'll know for sure, I guess. It's the moment. It's on the floor. So. It's the moment of truth. Yep. Ready? Uh, let me make sure nothing's behind you. And guys, I do have an exhaust leak because I guess me and Zane didn't. I guess me and Zane didn't sit the exhaust right, but. Go into into gear easy. Yeah, it went in reverse. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's when the manual swap was over. We officially got done. And Chandler, Fritz's cousin, actually drove the car before I got a chance to drove the car. He was like, "Yeah, man, I'm just gonna back it out for you." I was like, "Oh, all right, cool." And then he just took the car. 
so yeah he actually got to drive it before i did but after he came back that's when i drove it and it felt perfect here's the car sitting right there uh it is super dirty right now like super dirty because i've been doing uh some work on it to work out the few kinks that it has after the swap was over but here you guys go this this is how she's looking right now of course you can see the drive shaft through here and it sort of gets annoying because all the heat and the fumes coming up but uh i'm actually looking for a shift boot that'll sort of fit perfect for this i mean i might have to cut up the shift boot a little bit to get it to fit perfectly over this but um yeah everything should be good i'm gonna get some sort of metal plate so i could drill in to cover this hole and then after that i'm gonna get the regular you know leather shift boot to cover this and then everything should look good man i remember doing this in nick's car when he got his car swapped and how i said that i can't wait to be able to do this in my car and i'm actually doing it <laughs> i'm not gonna actually talk about how it drives and stuff like that yet uh i'm gonna save that for a different video because i feel like this video had enough in it already so i'm gonna save that for like a week later after i'm done driving this car for like a week to give you guys what i think about it but here it is man your boy is officially manual <laughs> and not no normal manual like it's an is 300 man when you got a manual is 300 it's like owning a unicorn <laughs> only thing that i haven't done for the manual swap yet is swap out the gauge cluster uh that's because i'm waiting for this gauge to catch up with the one that i have this is at 137,000, and the one that i have inside the house is at 141,000. maybe in a few months it'll reach there and then i'll swap it out with all new bulbs and everything maybe that'll be a video itself now one thing about this video is we were like completely prepared when it came to the tools that we needed and stuff like that for the swap but one thing that i wasn't prepared for was filming uh, and when I say filming is because my memory card it ran out of memory and then you know batteries dying And then I couldn't transfer things over to my computer because my computer got full and yeah, it was just horrible So I learned from my mistakes. That's why like the day after I think I did the manual swap I went to Best Buy and I got me a 128 gigabyte SD card And I also got a one terabyte hard drive to make sure that that never happens again I was using Matt's memory card because mine got full and I had to use my phone and a whole bunch of other stuff So that will never happen again I'm making sure that I'm prepared this time. All right, but that's gonna be it for this video, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope it was very informative for you guys, and I hope you guys could use it when you guys are doing your manual swap. Now, if you guys did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, and please share it on any place you can share it on. Instagram, Facebook, you can't really share on Instagram, but you can share clips, I guess. But Instagram, Facebook, forums any pages make sure you guys share this video as much as you can i'll really appreciate it please make sure you hit that subscribe button so we can hit 10k before the summer i know we could do it because the channel's been growing a little bit faster lately and i'm liking it so please just continue to hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet and i'll see you guys for the next one i'm out Experience thinking that's a better vision is funny. Eddie Murphy delirious.